All right, here we are in the Facebook ads manager, the campaign manager, whatever you want to call it. This is my own personal Facebook ad account. This is not my business account. I'm keeping that stuff separate. This is literally just me posting stuff on Instagram and promoting it on Instagram and running ads on Instagram to a specific audience to drive more traffic and increase my social presence online. Later on, when you guys start signing clients and have some expendable income, if you do want to have an online presence and start networking with higher value guys, uh, even dating online on Instagram. Instagram is a networking and dating app. That's how I use it. Literally just doing this for my own personal account has allowed me to break into both of those aspects at a higher rate of speed and a higher rate of force uh, since I've been doing this stuff and it's helped me build new connections. But that's a whole different story outside of SaaS. That's more about networking and building a good circle, which maybe I'll make a bonus video on that maybe later on. But right now we're gonna jump into what it looks like to set up a Facebook ad. So like I said, I'm in my own personal account. So what do we want this ad to be? I'm trying to think of a local business. Local businesses, a lot of restaurants, but we do we did a lot of restaurant examples in this course. Um, I'll do a barbershop, how about that? Let's do a barbershop. Let's go ahead and create. And we don't want to pick anything else except for leads. So the reason why we're picking leads is because we want more leads, obviously, right? So the reason also is because we have instant forms and we want to have forms integrated on Facebook because they tie in with Go High Level and it's just real easy to use. So here we are. I'm going to name this Barber Shop Test Campaign and no categories. Guys, real quick for anyone out there, Facebook has some weird terms. And if you have any ads regarding any of these topics, then you have to select one of these categories. But for this example, since we're doing a barbershop, um, we're not selecting any categories and we're not touching anything else for right now. So we're gonna click next and move on. And just so you guys know, in case you do have it for some of you, you're gonna have a message up here on the right that says you can't run ads because you, have, you haven't accepted the uh, Facebook lead gen terms of services yet. Don't worry, I have the link you guys gotta go to. It's right up here. I'm gonna paste it in the description of this video. This is one of my accounts, one of my uh, advertising accounts. It's for my actual Quarter Systems Facebook page. All you gotta do is click accept and then refresh and it'll be gone. So once again, I'm gonna have this link in the description in case you guys don't know how to do it. It's real simple. You just press one button and it's fixed. But for right now, we're gonna move on. We're gonna keep instant forms as normal. We're not gonna click anything else. We're not gonna create a performance goal or anything like that. So we're gonna continue scrolling down and daily budget, it could be, you know, 15, 10, anything for 10 to $20 is gonna be pretty good for local lead generation. I really wouldn't worry about making this anything crazy, at least in the beginning as well, because if this is a new Facebook ad account, which most likely it is for you guys, if you start increasing this daily budget like way up super fast, Facebook is going to restrict your account and you don't wanna have that happen because Facebook's terms and the restrictions are really annoying. And that's just one of the reasons why I moved to SaaS as well, because traditional SMMA, you're pretty much tied to Facebook and you're pretty much their slave, to be honest, because if you get an ad account restricted, then you gotta go through the whole process of getting it unrestricted and maybe even make a new ad account. And it's just a whole headache. From the start of when I even started SMMA, I knew that going into it and I was like, man, this is gonna be stupid because I don't like Facebook as it is, the way they, the way they operate and the way they have some of their uh, advertising policies. Sometimes you get banned for no reason. It makes no sense. I was part of uh, a different SMMA group and a bunch of people in the Discord were getting banned for not even, they didn't even know why they're getting banned, honestly. And for them to have that much power to control whether or not you're gonna be successful and be able to deliver results for your clients, that is not something that I like. So this is a reason why I don't just do SMMA anymore. This is why I leverage the SaaS and I'll use Facebook ads sometimes if I wanna go ahead and manually do something for a client or myself, or I'll just use Upex to do all this labor work for me. And in the next module, either the next one, or I've already, or you guys have already watched it, I'm not sure on the exact order of these videos, but you guys are gonna see these steps to go through and create uh, a good Facebook business account. And some of the things you can do upfront to uh, lower the chances of you getting banned on Facebook, because certain information in Facebook is gonna tell Facebook that, hey, this guy's account is actually legit. He's not just creating spam accounts and you know using a crazy ad budget to promote ads. It's kind of a red flag and their system is very, very sensitive when it comes to red flags, especially for new accounts. So guys, just know that going into it. And once again, this is why I usually don't like using Facebook for most of my life. And once again, I know it's really annoying that Facebook is just, just a pain in the ass for the most part. But we're gonna continue as all things are good. And we're gonna say that this daily budget is 20, like I said, no more than 10 to 20, especially in the beginning. 
And for right now, we're gonna keep this running and we're not really gonna set an end date. If you guys tend to forget things easily and you guys start getting a lot of clients, then, then maybe set an end date so you don't forget. But we're gonna keep that empty for right now because we don't need to do that. So here we don't have any new audiences. I have a bunch of used audiences, but I'm not even gonna go through them because they're not relevant for this example. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna go ahead and click all just men because just in this example, I'm gonna be targeting young to mid, not middle age, but like young to late 30s men uh, or mid, mid 30s men for getting a haircut. So we're gonna change it just to men like I have selected. Go to edit and we're gonna go from 18 to about 37 right here. Uh, and advanced detailing, I usually take this off because Facebook tends to just piss away your budget and we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna add interests and behaviors of our ideal client. So what is an interest of a young guy who goes to the barber shop? Well, it depends. It really depends on the business. It depends on the aesthetic of the barber shop, whether or not they're a traditional hair salon that's you know, for men and women, um, whether or not it's just for men for doing, you know, fades and doing male haircuts. For this example, we're going to pretend we're working with just a male barbershop that specializes in men's haircuts. So what's a demographic or interest of that kind of, of that kind of individual that goes to these places? So let's click browse, go to interests. A lot of the times these guys are going to be into some sort of exercising because a lot of these guys care how they look, including myself. So if someone cares about how they look, they're gonna care about what their hair looks like and what their physical appearance looks like. That's why I checked off physical exercise and fitness. Next, we're looking at hobbies and activities. I don't know if this is very relevant to a haircut, but we can do fashion, because fashion will be definitely included with this. We wanna do, uh, we wanna do hair for sure, hair products, obviously. We wanna do fragrances, personal care. Actually, let's take off fragrances. We don't really need that but we could do beauty salons, but that's not really for men. So I'm not gonna, so I'm not gonna check that off. Spa, no, that's more about women. Fashion and accessories, we're going to do, I don't wanna select any of this stuff. Just to show you guys too, this is how specific Facebook ads can be. You guys can really target anyone and anything by operating system if they have iOS or Android. This would really only come into play if you were targeting people for a high ticket item because a lot of people that have an Android or an iPhone usually have a little bit of expendable income or they're already in debt <laughs> and they don't really care about debt too much because they wanna buy things. Here, I just searched up fashion. I'm just gonna do uh, fashion design. I'm gonna do fashion again because once again, a lot of people that are into fashion are into, are into keeping a good fresh look, which ties in with having a good haircut. All this stuff is oddly specific to things that I don't even need. So I'm just gonna keep it as these interests right now for this example. And if you really wanted to, you can exclude certain interests and behaviors and demographics because it makes it even more direct how you can target your, your audience. We're just in the United States here. I forgot to go ahead and select Philadelphia for my example here. So we're gonna pick Philadelphia County. If you guys want, you can drop a manual pin and place it right here. That'll just drop the, the entire pin. I'm actually gonna do that for this example. And I'm gonna give it a 10 mile radius. So if you guys want, you can extend this radius to whatever you want. I'm gonna keep it at I'm gonna keep it at 10 miles for this example. And as you guys can see, don't take these numbers to heart because sometimes they are way off. But according to Facebook's algorithm, uh, like I said, these numbers can be way off. But you're gonna be getting anywhere from six to 26 leads based off of all these targets, this age range, and this, where's the budget at? Oh shit, where's the budget at? Uh, 20 bucks. So that's per day on average. So let's go to next and move on to the next point. Now here we haven't set up any picture or any sort of branding. So what we would even do now is go down to add media and then we would add an image. So I'm gonna go on Google real quick and just get a random image from a barbershop. So I just uploaded the test image to the ad, but we're not gonna do anything else with this right now. We're just gonna go to done and see what it looks like. So this is what the ad would look like. I don't have any copy or anything added yet, but we're piecing things together one by one. If you guys don't know how to get good ad copy, well, guess what? I'm gonna do this live with you guys and we're gonna go to chat GPT just to see what the AI can give us for this ad copy. All right, so let's give this a go for this barbershop example. Here we go. The call to action and everything. These guys, this 
this is what's so great about the 21st century. You guys can literally just get Facebook ad copy from, from a robot. So here we go. I typed in create Facebook ad copy for barbershops and they came up with five examples and they're all solid examples. And just to make your ad pop a little bit more, we can always add some emojis. So this is what it's gonna look like. You guys are gonna see, hey guys in Philadelphia, it's going, it's calling out only guys in Philadelphia because that's who we're targeting. Get a fresh cut at the Philadelphia Barbaco. Our skilled barbers are ready to give you the perfect hairstyle. Book your appointment now. Perfect call to action for the forum that I'm about to integrate. Here we're down to the call to action and we're gonna change it from sign up to book now to match the copy here that says book now because that's what we want these people to do. So here we have the form creator. I'm gonna rename this to Barber Shop Philly, just so we stay organized. And I do recommend you guys organize everything because it'll get really easy to get everything confused because originally it was just a date and time and you're not gonna remember what that is a week from now. So rename it and then we're gonna to go to more volume. We're gonna keep that the same. And our intro is gonna be the same image. I'm just gonna type for the headline, what are you looking for? So I asked them a question. Now I'm gonna list off some options because on their website, guys, I'm gonna drag and drop it here so you guys can see what I'm looking at. You guys wanna make sure you're, you're lining this up with your actual clients as well. So, you know, the numbers are correct, but this is what I'm seeing and, and you guys can see it as well. They provide haircuts for all this stuff. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is literally just move all that information over into this, into this list. So they're gonna be able to see all the options here when they first click on my form and now we're gonna go on the questions. And guys, we wanna make sure that we're putting this in the right order because a lot of people tend to not wanna give up their phone numbers at first. So what you gotta do is pretty much put your full name first, email next, and then phone number last because weird way human psychology works is through trial and error, we've learned that people are more likely to enter their phone number after they have already entered you know, their, their full name and their email because People really don't care too much to give out their name or their email too much because email gets flooded with spam anyways, but people are a little bit more protective over their phone number. So we want to put this last. If you were to put it first, then I would bet that the bounce rate from this form would probably jump pretty high opposed to having the phone number at the bottom. I know it's kind of weird, but that's just how it is. And I want to make sure you guys are having things filed correctly. And for privacy policy, it's kind of annoying guys. I didn't even show you guys how to add uh, your privacy policy to your your account. So I'm gonna do that in a minute. I'm gonna do it right now actually. Pretty much we go to agency view and then go to company and then go down to privacy policy. And then you're gonna paste your own privacy policy. For anyone that doesn't know how they, how they got it or if they even got theirs, don't worry as long as you guys got the snapshot from videos and videos back when you guys set your website up, you got the privacy policy too. All you gotta do is search up you know your domain and then type backslash privacy and then your whole privacy information will be there. And you can copy and paste your you know, privacy policy into here if you haven't already. So that's going to be right there. View Quarter Systems Privacy Policy. It'll be your business. And then link text, you know, this is just, I'm just gonna keep that blank. Um, we don't really need to put anything there. So now this is the end of the form here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this. We're gonna do, you can visit our website to book, book your haircut, something like that. And then view website, we're going to get their actual site view website so that's how it worked guys i'm not going to publish it but pretty much this is real straightforward for you guys let's go through everything that we did so far i'm actually going back to change this because just as i was reviewing this i was i had like a brain fart and i was like wait a minute people can't interact with this drop down menu so i'm just doing uh um, so I'm just updating the headline right now. So this is pretty much what we wanted to say is what we offer, we they do all this stuff. So then they would see this and be like, oh yeah, this is what I want. So then they would go to next and then they would fill out their information. Then they would go and you know accept the privacy policy here just because we have to do that. And then this is what they would see at the end of the form. And then they'd be prompted to go to the website and book their appointment. Or if you guys wanted to have it set up a different way and a different call to action, you could definitely do something different. That's it guys for Facebook ads. I hope that that was a full on guide for you. I'm not gonna publish this because I'm on my personal account. That'd be, that'd be kind of funny, but that's how you guys do it. And you know, I just didn't save that, but that's what it would look like. And real quick as well, guys, you can edit where you want your media to be, whether you want it to be on just Facebook feeds or Instagram feeds or stories or reels or wherever you want it to be. You can go through here and select it. And when you guys are updating or uploading the media, you can have the option to select where you want it. I didn't go ahead and go over that because you know it's pretty self-explanatory. 
but that's how you change it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a long one for sure and very in depth, but I'm glad I went over it for you guys so you now know how to do your own Facebook ads uh, if you did want to offer that for your SaaS company as well. So I'll see you in the next video.